Good day to you, beloved, and welcome to this vlog. We will continue immediately with our series. And this was the la last slide uh, that we went through, if I'm not mistaken. So we will start there. Well, we already went through it, by the way. So we will, we will start with the next one. And this is also a certain logic a la Paul. And we already know this passage because it, it talks about three categories of sinners. Remember that. Remember that. So the first one is those who know they are sinners and are believers as well because they have uh, uh, been granted faith graciously granted faith by God for them the cross of Christ you could say Christ is the power and wisdom of God the second category is those who know they are sinners and are unbelievers <clears throat> so to them the cross of Christ is just stupidity And the third category, and that's the, the category to which I mostly um, refer this series to. These are those who think they are not sinners and think they are believers, but in reality are unbelievers. To them, the cross of Christ, that message is a trap. It results, it results in their irritation and anger even. So this category by Paul is mentioned, uh, is, is called the Jews. The Jews. And this category is the Greeks in this passage. However, just like the 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 Palestinians nowadays are the spiritual uh, descendants of the Philistines in, uh, in the Bible. So the Christians in this time, they form the spiritual descendants of the Jews in Paul's time. Because they were the religious ones. So think about that. We go to the next one. So the question becomes, how do we read? Is it what we want to read to confirm our own sneaky desires? Or do we read what is actually written? Written. So let's go to an example here. Galatians 6 verse 10. Consequently then, as we have occasion we are working for the good of all yet especially for the family of faith the greek word translated into specially is malista that's the greek word so what does it really mean this passage does it mean the good so we are working for the good for all, or the, we have, I have to say, of all. Are we working for the good of all, including and extra the family members? Is that what it says? Or is it says, but in reality, just the family members, members not the others one, not the other ones, not all. What does it say? Just a matter of reading, right? Just just plain neutrally reading we are working for the good of whom for the good of all but especially for the family of faith so of course it talks about the first option the second option no it, it doesn't say the second huh? it doesn't say just the family of faith it says all including the family of faith but especially the family of faith that's what it says hope you see that and agree but we will continue 
with the real passage that I want to use. First Timothy 4 verse 10. For, for this are we toiling and being reproached even, that we rely on the living God who is the Savior of whom? Of all mankind, especially of believers. The same word here, malista, same word, meaning including and extra. Why extra? What does it say, this passage? It, does it say that God is the Savior of all, including and ex especially believers? Or does it say God is Savior only of believers? What does it say to you? Of course, it means that God is Savior of all because it says so all mankind but including and especially believers that part of mankind that part of the all mankind so what does that then specially what does it mean then it simply means that the present believers let's let's talk about the, the present believers they will be saved earlier they have an earlier expectation that's all in order also to serve the rest of creation that is the reason why they have a uh, have an earlier expectation they will serve so i hope this is clear now and that uh, that this will not be an issue of discussion never anymore <clears throat> so what does your heart want what's your attitude when you hear for the first time for instance that god will ultimately save everyone what 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 is your attitude are you relieved happy and grateful that even your um naughty uncle will be saved and everyone also your favorite aunt will be saved who, who died in, in unbelief but she will be saved for instance or when you hear this for the first time that God will save everyone do you get indignant irritated and even angry what is the case with your heart what's the situation I'm talking out of experience when I say that most Christians get angry believe it or not but why is that they get angry irritated because of the uh, let me see here here they will they the cross of Christ to them is a trap and it causes their irritation They get angry or irritated. Such a brilliant and stunning message. So the question is then, what type of reasoning do they use to protest it? For instance, um, this is the this says this talks about the reasons especially uh, of their anger about the salvation of all so they uh, it's it's a kind of to them in their in their mindset it's a kind of loss of their sense of exclusivity and their self justification their self righteousness i have to say towards sinners that's the situation that's what happened that's the reason why they get angry they they almost uh, they try to 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 gouge the consequences of this statement and the consequences is that uh, that, that they are e sinners even as the other sinners they are in the same boat so 
their position is being evaporated and they already see in, in their mind they see their friendships gone the friendships of their, their friends in church the how about the undesirably uh, sorry the undesirability of being placed in the same boat as the sinners as I just said they don't want to sit in the same boat as Hitler no they are better than Hitler that's self-righteousness at the bottom of this all is their confrontation with themselves their true self because then they are confronted if they hear about this they are confronted with the fact that no one is righteous they are not righteous but they don't want to hear that they want to hear that they are righteous because of their choice How about leaders? Yeah. Just want to look at something. What about leaders? For them it's even it's even worse because they have bigger interests. They see their power as one of the important interests. In their mind, they see it already melting away. Leaders see their revenues already drying up. Leaders see their reputation already shattered. Leaders see in their mind their control eroding already. And most of them think, no way, Jose will not happen to me and they hold on to what they have here on earth on earth so the type of reasoning used for instance oh they say then we can start sinning nicely or then it will be a mess of lawlessness if everyone is saved and we can li live as we want to everyone can then go about their business with impunity no punishment whatsoever if this is true salvation of all then we can all start living badly and sinning all arguments we all have heard already as believers So these reasonings are of course clear fallacies because they are focused, again, look at the universal law, they are fo focused on the short term. But guess what? Love is always focused on the long term. It's the strongest force in the universe and that is the only thing that will be left over. When everything is gone, every enemy is gone, love will stay. It's the strongest force in the universe. And it's always focused on the long term. Always on the ultimate, not the intermediate, but the ultimate outcome. So if we realize grace, then it results in great gratitude and joy. And as a result of that, the desire to sin becomes less and less and less and less and less. Remember that paradox of the free space and the straight line? It's the Christians who say, no, you have to walk in the straight line. You have to live straightly. You may, you may not sin. You have to follow the Ten Commandments. And that will even produce sin. According to Romans 5 verse 20. Where God's word says that the law came in. So that the, uh, that the transgression may increase. Sin increases because of law. 
But then, that's not the end of the verse. Then it says, but where sin increases, grace superabounds. Meaning that you cannot out sin grace. There's always much more grace than you can sin. That is the free space. And believe me, it's not about knowledge only. No, it's about realization of grace. When you realize grace, when the coin falls, it will result in great attitude and joy. And then you don't have, you don't even have the, the tendency to sin. Of course not. So let's go to another example then. I think I will finish now in this vlog because there's no not many slides anymore. So let's go to this very well known, I hope, example. For even as in Adam all are dying mortals, thus also in Christ shall all be vivified. That means make a life, make immortal beyond the reach of death 1 Corinthians 15 22 you can find that verse it's simple right God will eventually vivify all and it will be done in Christ because they will receive faith first okay so the heart attitude of Christians interprets this uh, interprets this text in this way the all in Adam truly are about all people all humans all creation or let's talk about the human world all in Adam everyone no exceptions but then they jump out of the consistency boat and then they say but the all in Christ concern only those who now believe not the rest as if God's word is not consistent but let's take a look at what this text really says let's analyze because this you can break down in four parts the first one is attribute so then you compare it's a perfect parallel right this text this verse so you compare even as with thus also same way the same way even as thus also you compare the location by comparing the you look at the location by comparing the one area with the other area also in that sense and you look at quantity in the one area and you compare it with quantity in the other area and of course last but not least you look at status in the one area and you compare it with status in the other area so I gave it colors in order to recognize it and then we will look at the first again with the colors so first attribute for even as is compared with thus also so in the same way in the same way so even as in Adam all die in the same way in Christ shall all be vivified let's continue we are going to look at location in Adam is compared to in Christ let's look at quantity how many in Adam all how many in Christ the same all of course I hope you it it it, it drills down now and if, if you look at status all die in Adam and in Christ all be will be vivified it's still future in terms of time but it's already guaranteed because of the resurrection 
of Jesus Christ. Can you see now that this is a perfect parallel? It's not to be denied. It's not possible. This is the truth. So let's look at some passages then. And then we will end this series. Isaiah 45, 23, where God says, By myself have I sworn from my mouth has gone forth righteousness, a word, and it shall not turn back. For to me shall bow every knee, and every tongue shall swear fealty. Meaning, ultimately, everyone will believe because it will done out of the inner being. I will show you that from the Greek. Romans 14, 11, where it says, for it is written, living am I, the Lord is saying, for to me shall bow every knee, and every tongue shall be acclaiming God. That can only be done, um, it can only be done from the inside out. So uh, with complete convincement. Let's look at the at the pinnacle of this um, this prophecy, Philippians 2, verse 10 to 11, that in the name of Jesus, every knee should be bowing, celestial and terrestrial and subterranean, and every tongue should be acclaiming, meaning from the heart, that Jesus Christ is Lord for the glory of God the father the greek word translating uh, translated in acclaiming is ex homologeo ex for inside out ex outwardly ex uh, homologeo meaning from the heart completely convinced that's the whole thing and just to be sure in order to to patch the whole thing round 1st Corinthians 12 verse 3 no one is able to say Lord is Jesus except by Holy Spirit there you have it one can only acclaim that Jesus Christ is Lord by Holy Spirit meaning completely convinced by Holy Spirit that means that that person believes that being believes and that will be the end of god's plan and then every condition is met for god to become all in all isn't that wonderful so i hope this coin falls maybe finally in your mind and in your heart Thank you very much for watching and see you in the next vlog.